Hi, I'm Natalie, and I'll be leading your practice today. You don't really need anything special other than just enough room to move around about the size of a yoga mat. If you have a yoga block, um, those do tend to come in handy. Uh, you don't necessarily need one, um, and a large book could be a nice substitute. If you are a music lover, feel free to turn on your favorite tunes. When I'm teaching in the studio, I love music, but it's a little harder online um, to do that. So we're going to make our way to our mat. And we're going to start in Thunderbolt Pose, which is just on your knees. This is where a block may or may not be helpful. If you feel a great deal of tension in your thighs or your ankles, you can sit on that block, you could sit on some books, you could sit on a pillow or a blanket. So find that place where you can begin to just settle into your body. So take a moment and find that place where you begin to draw your senses away from the outside world. You start tuning in to you. Begin to notice the breath in your body. And use this ritual of stillness and breath to really come home to your body, to notice and to take inquiry. So welcoming whatever you find, but noticing where is the body today? How is the body today? Mind, spirit, welcoming whatever arises. So anything on the spectrum from difficult thoughts, feelings, or emotions, or challenging things to the other end of the spectrum, really feeling joy in your body and joy in your movement. Maybe take a second to set an intention for your practice, just that place that you would like to send your energy and your focus. If nothing arises, presence is always hard to beat. Just being present for this experience. And then on the next inhale, find a nice arch in the back. So send the tailbone back, the chin tilts up, throat, heart, chest open. On the exhale, draw the belly in, round through the back and completely empty the lungs. So releasing all of that breath. Deep breath in on the inhale, tilt the tailbone back, lift the heart, open the chest, lift the chin. Exhale, round through the back, surrender the head forward. Deep breath in, rock forward. Exhale, round. Adding a little more movement now on the inhale, rise up. Onto the knees, sweep the arms up and overhead. On the exhale, begin to drop the hips, cactus the arms, arch the back, and then sweep around. So find your rhythm here. Every inhale, you rise. Every exhale, bend the elbows lower down. Feel that movement in the back, in the shoulders, front of the body, back of the body, opening up. And if your rhythm is a little different than my cue, that is totally fine. Allow your breath to move you. Once more here, deep breath in as you rise. Exhale as you lower. And then walk the hands forward, finding all fours. Here, always taking that time to make sure hands are beneath shoulders, knees beneath hips. Cast the gaze slightly forward, maybe just beyond your mat. Draw the shoulder blades down the back, ears and shoulders, a lot of distance here now. Gently scoop the belly. On your next inhale, allow the belly to drop, cow. So inhale, lift the chin, lift the hips, drop the belly. On the exhale, lift the pelvic floor first, draw the belly in, round through the back, press through the hands, allow the head to hang. Deep breath in, open. Exhale, round. So noticing that movement in the spine, every inhale and opening and invitation, every exhale, a rounding and a release. 
Meeting back in the center now, take a moment again to notice that alignment, to notice the stability in your shoulders by drawing them down and away from the ears. The belly is lifted, the spine is long, crown of the head reaching away from the sit bones. Finding sunbird here, keeping left hand and right knee anchored. Slide right hand forward, left foot back. Pause and really square through the hips. Draw that left shoulder blade down the back, lift the belly, and then elevate arm, elevate leg. Flex the foot. Notice the length between your heel and those right fingertips. If you are opposite of me, that's totally fine too. You should just have opposite arm and leg lifted into the air. Deep breath in, find your length. On your exhale, round through the back, press through that left hand, bring the elbow and knee closer together. <sighs> Deep breath in, reach. Exhale, round, drawing everything, knees and elbow close together. Deep breath in. Exhale, round, elbow and knee come closer together. You press heavy through that left hand. Extend one more time, option to stay long right here or to bend that knee, sweep the right hand back, take hold of the top of the left foot, press the foot into the fingertips and find that bind. The gaze is still out and beyond the mat just slightly. Before releasing the foot, if you took that bind, check back in with the belly. Re-engage through the core so that you can let go and release with intention. Bring the hands and knees back down. Find a brief child's pose. So sinking hips down, arms stretch long. Take a deep breath here, really allowing the belly and chest to expand with your inhale. So take up so much space. And then maybe that audible exhale out the mouth, almost like a sigh. One more deep breath in. Complete exhale. Find all fours once again, working through the opposite side of the body now. So left hand will slide forward, right leg slides back. Really draw that right shoulder blade down the back until you feel it nice and anchored, nice and steady. Draw the belly in and then elevate arm and leg. Find that length. Notice the heel, notice the fingertips, notice that length and strength in your spine. Deep breath in to prepare on the exhale, round, bringing elbow and knee closer together, pressing heavy through that right hand. Work with your breath. Every inhale, you extend. Every exhale, you really draw belly in and round. Once more here, reaching. Exhale, rounding. <sighs> Inhale, reach. Option to stay here in stillness and just explore that length. Or option to swing left hand behind the body, bend the right knee, reach for the top of that right foot. Press into the fingertips. And today, as you strengthen and open your body, can you soften your internal architecture, soften that internal armor? Belly is engaged as you release, reach arms and legs long, hand finds the mat, so does the knee bend or soften down into child's pose. Arms can reach up and overhead, or they may wanna sweep back for the heels. Both are wonderful options. They just access the body in different ways. So trusting that innate wisdom of your body, being intuitive and curious, and really honoring the body's needs. Making your way now back to all fours, hands and knees here. Again, stabilize through the shoulders by drawing the shoulder blades slightly down the back, maybe a little closer together in the back as well. Preparing for downward facing dog, tucking the tail, excuse me, tucking the toes, lifting tailbone. So lifting the tailbone up toward 
the ceiling softening the heels toward the earth. Arms are long and reaching. Fingertips are wide. They're heavy. Palms are heavy. Belly is engaged. Then casting the gaze forward, we'll step or float the feet up to the hands. So option here to walk the feet up or to give a little hop. Inhale, flat back lengthen. So rise up about halfway. Crown of the head reaching away from the sit bones. Exhale, forward fold. With a soft bend in the knees and an engaged belly, rise up. Deep breath in, arms up and overhead. Palms come together, exhale them down to heart center. Deep breath in, arms up and overhead. Exhale, split the palms, lead with the heart, forward fold. <sighs> Inhale, flat back, lengthen. Exhale, hands find the mat and step or float back. Plank pose, chaturanga. So bending through the elbows, you can stay in plank or the knees can find the mat. Elbows close to the body as you bend. And then opening up to cobra or upward facing dog. Tucking the toes, downward facing dog. Option here to remain in stillness, exploring your downward dog or finding gentle movement for your down dog or working through that series one more time. So you have options here. Also option to find child's pose at any time. Casting that gaze forward, step or float up. Inhale, flat back, lengthen. Exhale, forward fold. Deep breath in, rise up. Arms overhead. Hands to heart center, melting down on that exhale. Deep breath in, lift arms up and over. Split the palms, lead with the heart, forward fold. <sighs> Inhale, flat back, lengthen. Exhale, forward fold, stepping or floating back, chaturanga. Upward facing dog or cobra. All of us making our way now to downward facing dog. Pausing here again to take inventory, to notice. So notice body, notice breath. Heavy hands, that energy traveling up the arms and through the shoulders, down the back. Notice the backs of the legs, soften the heels toward the earth. Preparing for warrior two, right foot remains on the mat, left leg lifts and steps through. As you step through, if that foot gets stuck, you can pick it up, pick up the ankle and bring that foot forward. Right foot spins down perpendicular to the left and we rise up warrior two. So the left heel aligned with the arch of the right foot Shoulders are low, they're over the hips. Energetically, the feet are very heavy. It's as if they could work away from each other, even though they're not moving. But energetically, they're really pressing away from one another. Nice, vibrant bend in the front knee, the knee over the ankle. Warrior two, cast your gaze out and beyond those left fingertips. Next inhale, sweep that left arm up, drop the right arm down, peaceful warrior on the inhale. Exhale back to warrior two. Deep breath in, lift, peaceful warrior. Exhale, warrior two. Peaceful warrior once again, holding here. And then bringing left arm, left forearm to the left thigh, right arm reaches and extends up and overhead for that extended side angle. Take the right arm up straight out from that right shoulder joint. Cast your gaze up to the right fingertips. As the left knee begins to straighten, drop left hand and left arm down. Triangle pose. 
One more breath here, and then bending through that left knee, find warrior two, one more time. And then rainbow the arms down either side of that left foot. You turn that back leg so that all toes are facing the top of your mat now. And then we're going to work the hands inside that left foot to find Skandasana. So we're on right heel, left tippy toes. Left knee is bent, right leg is relatively straight. And then we're going to work back and forth just a bit. There are many options here. As you bend back and forth, you can keep fingertips on the mat, using them to guide you back and forth. If the floor feels a little far away, you can also use a block here as you find your way back and forth. Also option to bring hands to heart center. Ooh, you saw me almost lose it there. Or arms overhead. The next time you find your right knee, pause there. Rotate toward that right knee. Left leg is long and reaching behind the body. The knee softens down to the mat. Low crescent lunge. You can keep upper body melted over that right thigh. Or you can walk the upper body up. Maybe arms are overhead. Or maybe they cactus and the heart really opens up. Wherever you are, returning the torso to that neutral position first. If you lift it up and open into cactus arms, then melt over the thigh. Walk the fingertips inside of that right foot and then work your way back to the opposite side. So first, right knee is bent, left leg is straight and you're on that heel of the left foot. Walking over now to find low lunge opposite side. So once you're to the left, begin to make your way to the top of your mat. Back leg is long and reaching, then the knee bends and drops down. Many options here. Again, melting over the thigh or walking upper body up. Also, arms could reach overhead or elbows could bend, heart and chest open, really sinking into that right hip. If you took that option, come back to a neutral spine first, bring the fingertips back down to the mat, tuck the back toes, lift the knee away from the mat and step forward. Pause in forward fold. So lots of options here. Fingertips on the mat. Or you could take elbows and opposite hands. Or maybe even a little sway here. You can also wrap peace fingers around the big toes. Keep the el elbows narrow toward the midline of the body and bend the elbows. Wherever you are, find your breath again. Deep inhales and long, complete exhales. If you took an arm variation, releasing the toes or releasing the elbows, and then dropping the hips down. So lifting onto the tippy toes, drop the hips down. The hips may lower straight to the mat, or you may reach behind and walk yourself back. Maybe straighten out the legs for just a moment. Give them a little shake. Before rolling to our backs, let's find one boat. So walking the feet closer to the body. A nice long spine. Give a little tilt back. Notice your pelvic floor lifting, drawing up, and your belly scooping in. And then legs come together and they squeeze together. Walk the toes a little closer to the body. Spin the palms up. This can be boat or boat can float. So floating the legs up, really squeezing them together. 
Next, exhale, feet find the mat. Give yourself a nice hug. First, finding that long, lifted spine, anchored sit bones, crown of the head reaching to the ceiling. On your exhale, keep your grip around those knees so you've got that support, and then exhale, round through the back. From here, walking your feet away from the body and then rolling upper body down. Maybe a little windshield wipering of the knees here before allowing the arms and legs to fall into a place of stillness. So here they can stretch out just flat on the floor or maybe you wish to have a pillow beneath your head or your knees. But allowing your breath to become soft and steady, rhythmic and natural. Notice the weight of your body settling toward the earth. Allow yourself to just be. Our practice of cultivating stillness is just as important to our growth as our momentum is. We say we want change and so we must take the time to stop and ask the questions. What's working? What's blocking? Where can I let go and make room for what's making its way to me? It's never too late to push pause, disrupt the plan, or choose an entirely new Noticing again your breath and the way it moves throughout your body. Maybe inviting that breath a little deeper. Inviting gentle movement back into the body, beginning with that flutter of fingers, the wiggle of toes. Working your way into a lovely stretch before rolling to one side or the other to rest a moment before you rise. Bringing yourself now to a comfortable, upright, seated position. That could be crisscross, uh, sukhasana, or it could be um, on your knees once again. However you would like to close out your practice. On your next inhale, sweeping arms up and overhead, casting your gaze up towards your hands. Palms come together, melt down to heart center, a nod of gratitude and thanksgiving for this practice and for the ability to nourish ourselves with both rhythm and with rest. Thank you.